Sorry, it's a little bit late. Yes, it's sorry for that, um, but I just wanted to let you know that we've already had the fire in this place and we're already um, releasing the miracles and the anointing. So that's why we are kind of um, uh, without words at the moment, but we prophesy that the atmosphere that's here tonight will just absolutely go through the Zoom, that that which we've shared in here will go into your living room. And I want to say to you that God is on the move. God is busy doing miracles, even though the enemy wants to tell us nothing is happening. There is wars and rumors of wars and there's COVID and lockdown. And, 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 and I say, no, it depends on where you put your focus. Yes. It depends on where you put your focus. And God is always right and ready to release his goodness his kindness his mercy if we will only believe mm. and it's a, like i said last week it's such an important time in the spirit for decision making it's december which is not a time to wind down but it's a time to pick up your prayer to push we are entering and we are coming close to the door of 2022 which is a crossing line and we have to cross over and the lord is saying to you tonight you have to position yourself you have to position your faith god wants to engage with you to be able for you to cross over and God wants you at this time to specifically uh, remove every distraction, every place where the enemy is trying to entangle you with demonic fires and demonic explosions and stuff that distract you from the focus. Because heaven is focusing right now at this time to, to, to want you to prepare spiritually and physically to cross over. And you must be ready to be able to do that. So I want to share a word tonight regarding that. We're going to yes. do prayers. So please stay tuned in. Pray with us because I know the Holy Spirit is going to do an amazing thing even in your house tonight where you sit across the zoom so as you link up your faith with us we're really going to trust the lord for a shift in the name of jesus amen and i want to say to you ex be expectant you have to be expectant in this week and we'll share a little bit later both myself and anton went through some tough times but even in the midst of the tough times god has just came down and blessed us that we said jesus is this possible certain things started happening in the midst of all the turmoil and we just said hold on jesus you are so good so good that even if the enemy blows fires even if the enemy starts bringing things against us we know like we know that the god that we serve is well able to give us an escape route the god we serve is well able to provide for us the God that we serve is well able to heal us in the midst of places and times when people say things are not possible. So I want you to extend your faith and say tonight, Jesus, will you touch me? Amen. Even if you just put your faith to the fact that if you touch his garment, his healing virtue is able to go through that cloak into your life. I prophesy that miracles will be released into your life as you are holding out your faith. I prophesy tonight that the God who has done so many miracles, and Anton will tell you all about some of them, that that same God will do miracles in your life tonight. Amen. In Jesus' mighty and name. saying that he wants you to end this year of strong in Yes. Because there's some stuff that he wants to release to you and he needs your faith to be able to release it to you. It is a time of miracles and God does not want you to end in trauma and in discouragement and disillusionment. Okay, so we're going to shift that tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus. and I'm excited. We've received the word of the Lord, so stay tuned after the worship. Don't go away. Let's Amen. worship. Let's worship. We thank you, Lord, and we serve a mighty God. Yes, Lord. 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 Father, as we worship you tonight, Lord, I just know, Father, that you release, Father, your angels into our midst. Father, I ask that you release your breath, your Ruach breath over every area of our life. Father, I ask that you release and breathe, my God. Blow your breath of life over the spiritual landscape of our life. I prophesy that life to come, Father, to the dead places. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break by the power of the Holy Spirit every yoke, every burden, every confinement, every entanglement, Father. Father, I brood trauma, I brood devastation, I brood disappointment, disillusionment by the power of the Holy Ghost. We break the power of exation over our spirits. I bind and uproot a spirit of exation and hope deferred. I command you to leave God's people. I break the yokes in the name of Jesus of those things that rob our faith, that brings us to a place of devastation and trauma. I break the effects of trauma over God's people. And tonight, Father, I ask it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You ignite a fresh faith in us, that you ignite, Father, 
together a fresh hope in us, a fresh expectation for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, let it be birth. I thank you, Father, that you release a gift of faith upon your people. Lord, doesn't matter where you are, just say, yes, Lord. Father, release a new faith in me. Release a fresh power of the Holy Spirit in me that will ignite the dead places. May faith arise. I prophesy over you, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Father, we release with the power of the Holy Spirit a gift of faith upon your people, upon those, Father, that are tired and that are weary, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, tonight that you shift your people and position them to receive your miracles, to receive the power, Father, of your miracle-working power, resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. Be released in the name of Jesus. And we honor you. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do tonight. Father, we activate our faith and we engage with you tonight for what you have in store for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Wasn't that great? We could have gone on with the worship. Thank you. Total, total, total shift in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Anybody got a word? Come. Thank you, Lord. Um, in worship, I saw, while I was worshiping, I saw this like feathers grow, grow on me. And I felt like it was like an eagle. I was starting to like become like an eagle. And I felt how God said that he's upgrading our gifts, skills, and abilities to higher levels. Because I felt like the enemy wants to... <laughs> As because um, I felt how um, God said the enemy um, is going to bring situations before us that's going to almost test us more than we think we're capable of, and how the enemy almost wants to to take that to um, to take us out. But I felt God said that He's going to level us up in all our abilities on. And without even us having to almost contend through, um, contend for or go through years of like prayer and like um, the process of a Godfather God to you supernaturally as the enemy wants to almost like upgrade the circumstance, the difficulty, God says he's going to upgrade your abilities and your capabilities to the level that's even higher than the enemies so that you can take the enemy out, the enemy not taking you out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, Adrian just shared with us that he, he saw a vision of the Lord stamping spiritual passports. Who needs a bit of that? Yeah. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you give us, Father, that you stamp our spiritual passports, you give us access and favor. Thank you, Lord, from heaven that you're giving a mandate for people to move forward and have access and favor in the realms and the places where they need it. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, we invoke it upon. I thank you, Father, that it's a time where you give approval, Father, for movement and that you're going to do great and mighty things in the name of Jesus because we are on heaven's timeline, Father, for great things to happen in Jesus' name. And we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Good evening. In Acts 12, King Herod, he arrested some of the people of the church with the intention to persecute them. And then he put James to death with a sword. And as he saw that the Jews, they were pleased with that, then he decided he's going to put Peter now also in prison and arrested him. And so as Peter was in the prison, the Bible said there was four squads of four soldiers, two sleeping next to Peter with two chains in his arms, in his hands. But the night, the very night before Peter was about to, 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 to on trial, the angel of the Lord appeared to Peter in that cell. And the Bible said a light shone in that cell. And the angel of the Lord struck him in his side and he said, come, get up. And he said, put on your clothes and put on your sandals and put on your, clo your cloak. And he said, follow me. And at that moment, the two chains fell off his wrist. Then the Bible said they went through the one uh, um, God, the second God. He came just in front of that iron gate that leads to the city. And the gate just opened for himself. Can you imagine that? Then they walk, the Bible said they walk one street and the angel disappeared and he left Peter. And only then Peter realized, but it's the angel of the Lord that visited him. And he said, now I know without a doubt that it was the angel of the Lord that visited me and that the Lord came to escape, uh, um, help me to escape. 
And then it went, and, and that actually, I was thinking, we all need an encounter like that, that you know without a doubt that that is God. And without that, you know that you know that you know this is God that helped you. And so Peter went to the house of Mary. When they got there, they were all praying. They said the church were praying. And I was thinking, why did um, James die, but Peter was escaped? And then it dawned on me that because the church prayed for to God for Peter. So nothing happens until somebody prayed. So he got there. Rhoda answered the door. And she was so overjoyed when she, when she heard it's Peter's voice and she ran into the house. She didn't even open the door and she said, Peter's here. Guess what the church told her? Now you're out of your mind. It must be his angel. And I was thinking, wow, this is the church which was just praying now for Peter. But they, they didn't have belief that it can be him, that the Lord can actually uh, rescue him and, and escape him. But the, what amazed me is, even then, the Lord answered them. The Lord still escaped Peter because they prayed. And so I just want to share a short testimony at my work. Um, a few months ago, with a small management team and all of the other managers had a project. And um, I was asking the Lord, I had to help all of them and work very hard. And I said, Lord, this is not right. I want my own project. A little bit of competitiveness in me. Yes, I know. And then... One day there was a presentation to be made in our, in our workplace, and it was an hour before the time. Then they asked me, who, want, who will do the presentation? Nobody wanted to do it because there was no preparation time, and the Lord said, do it, I'll help you. So I did the presentation, and the next week the senior manager wanted this presentation to be, to be done to all the businesses, to all the heads of the HR and the HR manager, and the Lord just opened a side door for me. And then... There was an IT person who started with, the, the, actually the IT manager who started with the specs and there was no business anal analyst on the project and I just started doing this, the specs with my job and I really worked long hours and so forth and I thought, okay, it's only for the time being and then it's going to be handed over to the test team and the test manager will run with that and then they came back to say there's no, no capacity there, they can't test it. And I just had to do all the testings and all the, the manage all the testings of the whole um, project. And it was really a complicated project, but it was for, uh, for the benefit of our um, um, department. And so the Lord just gave me so much favor. There was a developer, and that guy was sitting in Mauritius. And the one w a weekend, I decided I'll have to test this whole weekend with two other people. And normally our managers doesn't di uh, speak directly to the, to the IT people. They work through a lot of protocol. Those that in corporate will know. And that guy just mailed me and gave me his cell number. And he said, when I'm not planning anything, you can mail me directly. I said to the IT uh, woman, listen, this is what the man said. She said, well, if that is what he said, go for it. And so me and two other ladies, we tested the whole team. And as we were testing, we find out all the mistakes. That guy was just rectifying it and, and, and fixing it in, in, during the weekend. I even came to church. And when I, the evening locked on, that man just fixed more stuff and so forth. And I just felt the favor in the hand of God. But I want to say to you today, it's not because I was so clever or I was so good. Although the Lord showed me a key. And he said, I'm giving you a key of wisdom. And two days after that, I was praying. I said, Lord, this is so huge project. What if I made a mistake? It is all the pension funds and there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong and claims and all of that. A lot of different kind of benefits involved in different kind of systems. And the Lord woke me up. I like to pray at three in the morning. The Lord woke me up this one morning and I couldn't sleep then again. And the Lord just gave me a download of information. Do this and do that in all directions. It was supernatural. And I was just reminded about the church that was praying for Peter. If you really trust the Lord, you can have favor. And the Lord can open for you a side door. When, when, not, when people say no, no man. When, when God said yes, no man can say no. Can you hear me? Okay. Just wanted to switch mics. Right. Is the echo of I'll sort it out? Right. I wanna ask you something. Who of you had a fabulous, peaceful week? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Thank you for that laugh. It's probably a nervous laugh, eh? 
I want to tell you, I don't know about you, but last week was one of those weeks that I said, Jesus, 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 boy, oh boy, can anything go this direction more than what it has? It's been from this side and that side. And as you know, that we were invited to speak in Johannesburg two weeks ago, and we were booking everything. And you know, the thing is, it's not, it's not an issue to book your ticket. But those of you that have flown before, it's a mission to get hold of anyone to try to switch your tickets. So we were planning and we were thinking, okay, we're going to do this and that. And, and everything was going according to plan until someone got sick. And then we had to phone the, the people at the church. We had to cancel all the meetings, phone the people at the airlines, postpone anything. It took for Anton almost two days just to organize because the people on the other side keep on saying at the airlines, we will get to you, to you within three days. No, no, you don't understand. We don't have three days. No, no, we'll get back to you. And every, you know, after we have literally canceled everything, we even phoned the lady from the spit because we've got our spit, bro. Who knows that we have our spit? At the end of the year, we've, we moved this bit, we moved the tent, we moved everything, and we went like, oh, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. And um, just to wake up the next morning for the pastor to phone us to say, I'm so sorry, but more people got sick, and you have to cancel it again. And I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel. How is this possible? And it's been coming from every side. And then, just to add the cherry to the cake, these people from the church that's money, and why do you have to move the function? Because now we can't come. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, can you please help me? And I went to pray and I said, Lord, what is all of this? You know, you minding your own business, doing your own thing, and suddenly other people are rearranging things for you. Anyone knows what I'm talking about? And I said, Jesus, what is going on? And I went to pray. Rabbi Sandra, I said, Jesus, what is it? And I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say to me, be careful. Keep your peace. I said, keep your peace. Don't allow the enemy to flip the script. I said, Jesus, what's this all about? And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me clearly, the enemy has sent out a mob of demons against the remnant, against them to try to inflict them emotionally so that they get triggered, they feel overwhelmed, they lose their, 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 their momentum, they lose their peace. And then they self stop that which the Lord was busy doing in their lives because of the emotional turmoil. And I really felt the enemy came in to try this week to bring such a lot of emotional stuff against us by interfering in our day-to-day -day stuff that we kind of start questioning God's goodness, God's kindness. And the worst of it is, it felt to me like some people's faith got a wobble. Now, let's just be honest with one another. As born-again believers, spiritual, tongue-speaking, devil-chasing Christians, we are not supposed to be at a place where our faith strikes a wobble, but it does. And I felt specifically the emotional turmoil going on in the, in the spiritual realm where the enemy is pressing our buttons. Who knows what I'm talking about? Suddenly, things in your life started displaying things in your personality that you just had to say, Jesus, what is going on? And the Lord said, it's because the enemy wants to overwhelm my children that they lose their peace so that he can come and stop that which God is busy doing in their life, that they cannot cross over into the new that the Father has for them. And it's actually that the Lord reminded me. And he reminded me of Mark 4, when Jesus was the whole day preaching and he was tired. Remember, he was a human. And he was tired right at the end of the day, and he said to, to his disciples, Hey, boys, come, let's go. And the Bible said, and I love it, the Bible said, and he left the throng. The throng is those ones that you always have to pick up and make sure that they're okay, because their faith are pulling your faith down. Yes. The Bible said, and Jesus said, let's leave the throng behind. And Jesus got into the boat, and they had an assignment. The script was written. The script was, we're going to go to the other side, the Bible said. And how many of you, there's a script, and the enemy comes with all kinds of stuff to flip the script, to press your buttons so that things can start going wrong. And this is exactly what happened. 
when Jesus went down into that boat to start sleeping. And I want to say to you that Peter was in charge of the boat, the Bible said. And he was a very qualified and skillful skipper. Can you remember before they met Jesus, they were all fishermen. So he knew exactly what to do in what storm. But suddenly as Jesus was sleeping, because they had an assignment, the script said they're going to the other side. What happened? Out of nowhere, a vortex arose. Storms arose. The wind started howling and blowing. The waves started becoming bigger and bigger. And suddenly to the point where it actually fell into the boat. So much so that Peter, who is a skilled skipper, started stressing. The situation became so overwhelming to him. The fires, the stuff that was going on that he felt overwhelmed emotionally. And you know what the Bible said? And the Bible just said it very clear and plain and nice. If it was my version, it would have been different. Because I can just imagine being in a storm, being wet, look like a wet dark. Your clothes is wet, it's wind, you're hanging on for dear life, and Jesus is sleeping down there, seriously. And I'm thinking by myself, poor Peter must have thought, I have tried everything. Who of you felt that you've tried everything, but somehow it's coming. It's coming this way and it's coming that way. And I think Peter came to a point where he just absolutely felt, I can't anymore. And he went down there and he said, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to die? Any one of you felt like this? Jesus, don't you care? Don't you see? The boat's going to drown. We're going to drown. The water is already there. I should have paid already the rent. I should have done this already. Jesus, where are you? Jesus, this and this should have happened. Where are you? Don't you care? And I feel that the enemy came with this vortex of things for, to literally come and emotionally cause so much turmoil that we started doubting the goodness of Jesus that we start questioning our faith. We start questioning, Jesus, don't you care about our situation? We have done so much for you. We have prayed so much. We have sowed so much. We have taught. We've helped the widow. We've helped the poor. But Jesus, where are you when I need you? And I felt the Holy Spirit said, we have to guard our emotions. We need to be careful that we keep the peace on our inside. Because the minute... When Peter became overwhelmed and he rushed down there to say, Jesus, don't you care? Wake up. Jesus probably went like, huh. you know, is there any way? what's going on? Because he knew there's an assignment and he couldn't allow the fear of what was going on in the atmosphere in the inside of the boat. He couldn't allow that to overwhelm him the way it overwhelmed Peter. And Jesus just calmly I'm so happy I wasn't there. I would have been really like Peter, just throwing all the toys out of the boat. And he just literally went and he just spoke to the storm Jesus. And he said, be quiet, keep your peace. And suddenly everything, everything became quiet. And I felt that the Lord was saying, it's that same Jesus. If you accepted him, it's the same Jesus on your inside. And the Lord says, instead of going on and throwing emotional tantrums, questioning God's goodness, having a faith that is doubting in the Lord's goodness, the Lord says, starts prophesying the way Jesus prophesied. Because it's the same Jesus in you that calmed the storm that day. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that every storm that is raging will start quieting down. And I want you to lift up your hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every person that can hear the sound of my voice, Lord, where the enemy wanted to send out wicked winds against our emotions, that wanted to cause emotional turmoil, that wants us to cause... Um, us to father literally lose our peace on the inside today i prophesy be quiet i prophesy that every storm be quiet in the name of jesus we dismantle the plans of darkness to cause vortexes of emotional turmoil to emotionally inflict us constantly we cancel it by fire and we release the peace of jesus christ that peace that surpasses all understanding and i want to end off by quickly reading your scripture and then I understood it the whole time the Lord said to me, Psalm 44. And I encourage you 
tonight to go and read Psalm 44. But this is the part that the Lord said to me. If the Lord has given you an assignment, if the Lord said, this and this is what you're going to do, I want you to listen to this. Psalm 44, verse 3 said, Israel, his beloved city, his beloved nation said, they did not go to get their inheritance, their possession that I've promised them. How many of you are relying on God for some promises? How many of you still got some outstanding prophecies, promises? The Lord said, it was a promise that I was going to give them Canaan. It was a promise. The Lord said, Israel did not get the land by their own swords and their own efforts, but it was my arm. It was my right hand, my arm, and above all, it was the light of my countenance. It was my favor and because I delighted in them. And I want to say to you, if you keep your faith, your faith and if you keep your peace, God is going to release his favor and his countenance into every stormy situation. And you will get every promise because he is mindful of you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's just stand quickly. We're going to pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you come and bless, Father, the reading of your word, the blessing, Father, of the message, Father, in the name of Jesus. We come against every resistance from the outside, everything that's resisting you and your mind from the outside, from your bloodline. I bind every strong man that wants to come and resist, Father, the work of the Holy Spirit with this ministry, with the prayers in the name of Jesus. We bind you, we command you to, to, be, to stay bound for this time. I break the control. Father of mind binding spirits over people. I break the locks on people's minds, Father. Father, to, to not understand and to resist, Father, the, the new and the, what you want to execute tonight. In the name of Jesus, we break those padlocks over people's understanding of religion, tradition, and legalism. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I release the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in this place. A deliverance anointing, Father, to shift and change things around, Father, tonight over the spiritual landscape of your life in the name of Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Amen. Isn't that nice? Lekker, lekker, like we say in South Africa. Okay. Okay. So what heaven's focus is right now from an Issachar perspective is God wants us to prepare ourselves emotionally and spiritually to cross over into 2022. That's what's on heaven's agenda. That's what God wants you to do. It's a sole, exclusive focus to get you there. Okay, because not everybody's going to get there. That's why we were talking about there's a war raging in the spiritual realm at the moment. There's a lot of stuff happening around you that wants to disable you and distract you so that you cannot be in a position and be ready to cross over and go through that gate. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a line spiritually that you have to cross over. We have to be ready. It's not a time to wound down. It's not a time of holiday. It's a time that say, Lord, I'm focusing on this. I am not, I'm not staying behind. I'm accessing what you want me to access. And you don't need a lot. You just pretty much need faith and a, and a positioning. Okay? And the picture we got even this week as we were walking and talking, Kari says it's almost like, it's like the enemy is bringing these demonic volcanic eruptions around you. These demonic fires that suddenly been lit against you from different sides. And a lot of that is, is not only in different areas, but also emotionally. Emotional torment, extreme emotional torment, extreme affliction, uh, mental stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Because it, it's about, it's all that, almost that pressure. And Kari was saying to me, it's a terrible atmosphere in the spirit around us. Terrible. Isn't it terrible? Yes, everybody is nodding. And sometimes we think it's just us. But it is. It is because there's a warfare in the spiritual realm. The enemy wants to block us, get us out of alignment, get us disabled, distracted, so we can't have that posture to move into this gate of 2022. Because God wants to release miracles. God is about to, 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 to release a harvest. And we're part of an advancing kingdom. The Lord is on His, on his move. He's not distracted by COVID or anything else. God is busy on the move and, and advancing. We're part of an advancing kingdom. God is moving with an agenda, and I want to move with God. Okay, so the enemy's plan is to distract and block and stop and hinder us. That's what the Bible says. He, he can do that. So we must, be, we must cut ourselves loose from the entanglement that these things bring. 
I mean, I had people phoning me that is attacking one another and, you know, they are so caught up in, in a lot of stuff from the enemy and detangled and it's a distraction from where God wants you to be. Yeah, and you feel vexed and traumatized and, and you know, I can't anymore because, because the enemy wants to keep you in that place. You can't advance. Who knows what I'm talking about? But if you can identify the plans, because the enemy doesn't play fair in this life. He doesn't, he doesn't play fair in this game of life. The Bible says he comes with an opportune time at a strategic time to block and stop you. He waits his time out. He waits his time out. He's clever. He waits. And this is a strategic time. So he comes and there's a lot of resistance corporately. There's a lot of stuff in your own life. And this is what he wants to do to block strategically from, from you advancing into that place where God wants you to be. His goal is to create circumstances around you to traumatize you or to make you feel more traumatized you already are. I think a lot of people are super traumatized. So he creates uh, further trauma. And he enjoys every moment of it. And his ultimate goal is to vex your spirit man. He wants, uh, it's not a once or thing, it's over time. What is vexation of your spirit man? You, remember we are body, soul and spirit, Right? Your spirit man, or the, your spirit is the, is, the, is the area that most innermost, innermost part of you that communicates with God. So this is a very important, and it's your, if, you, your, if your spirit man is not strong, you will not be able to cross over into a new season. So your spirit man needs to be strong. The, the Bible says in, in Ephesians 6 verse 13, Ephesians 10 to 13, the Bible says you need to be able to stand in the evil day. We are in the evil day. And the Bible says, how can you stand by being strong in the Lord through the power of your communion with Him, be empowered through your time that you spend with Him and in His strength and by clothed with the full armor of God. Then you'll be able to stand in the evil day. Some people have got a few pieces missing of their armor. But the bottom line is he wants to vex your spirit man. Vexation between to deflate your spirit man. It's almost like you puncture it. And you say, you actually at the point where you feel, if, I, if one more thing happens, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And this is his, but you'll use anything and anybody to vex you. Vexation of your spirit means you have a broken spirit. A broken spirit happens when life's difficulties crush your ability to resist. When you have a broken spirit, it means, and you classify, life's difficulties have crushed your abilities to resist. And God wants your spirit man to be strong. That's why I said last week we have to spend time with God, sit in His presence through your union with God. He releases um, a power and might through an umbilical cord into, you, into your spirit man to strengthen your spirit man so that you can stand. God wants your spirit man to develop, develop an overcoming power as you overcome. As you overcome, your spirit man develops an overcoming power to be able to push through and to stand. Proverbs 18, 14 says, The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain and in trouble. But a weak and a broken spirit, who can bear it and who can raise it up? So the Bible is saying to us, if your spirit man is strong through your union and the empowerment of God as you spend time with him, as your spirit man is strong, you'll be able to withstand bodily pain and the, and the pressure that comes from troubles. But if there's a lot of trauma in your life, it affects your DNA and it weakens your spirit. Trauma weakens your spirit. What is trauma to me is not trauma to you. Your parents, I hate it when parents tell their kids, listen, that wasn't that bad, man. That wasn't that bad what you went through. It wasn't that bad. You're just like, no, it is what is reality to you. How you experience it. You can never tell somebody it wasn't that bad. It's what your experience was. And trauma has a different effect on different people based on your personality and how you experience. What is trauma to me is not maybe not trauma to you. So trauma, the enemy knows what to do. So trauma affects your DNA. It weakens your spirit, your spirit man. And imagine if you come with a lot of trauma from your childhood years, because trauma is a demonic spirit that entrenches and, and lodges itself in your DNA, in, 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 your, in your cell structure, in your, in your brain almost. It's a, it's, it's a thing with tentacles that lodges itself there. And if you haven't dealt with the trauma of your childhood and you go through these seasons, the enemy adds more trauma. Brings more trauma, and that's why you later can't, you feel that life's difficulties is crushing your ability to resist, because your coping mechanisms has anyway been under pressure since since you were born. 
And if you haven't dealt, we've ministered to a lot of people that had a lot of trauma um, since they were growing up. And that trauma, if you're not dealing with it, and there's more trauma added, that causes a broken spirit and it's difficult. And that's why the Bible says we need to help those in the body of Christ that are weak. Help us, let us, let us pull them on and let us help and carry their burdens. So Jesus wants us to be whole body, soul, and spirit. He wants our spirit man to be whole. And you know, after Jesus was crucified, His disciples were super traumatized. They were discouraged. They were low. They were so traumatized because things didn't turn out the way they expected. Have you been in a situation where things, you thought it's going to work out this way and it didn't work out the way you expected? That can bring a lot of devastation. They actually thought Jesus is going to be some king of the Jews. He's going to be um, some kind of savior that's going to rescue them from Roman oppression. They had their ideas about what Jesus was. And then he died. Devastated. They were traumatized, the Bible says. And the bottom line that God wants us to know is that his thoughts, his ways, his plans are higher than ours. We don't have to. We mustn't try to figure it out. And many times the end result that where you find yourself now in is not maybe what you've expected, but God says it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it's the wrong outcome. Okay? It doesn't mean it's the wrong outcome where you found yourself. Because we know they were devastated, they were traumatized, but the outcome that God wanted was actually the outcome that was planned. And God fulfilled it just in, in, in a different way. So our experience and perception how things work out many times is wrong and we are traumatized by that result. But God said it doesn't mean it's not because it's not the way you expected it to be that it is the wrong outcome. Yeah. Remember we spoke last week, we said God, the Bible says God will perfect everything concerning your life. Use those scriptures as master keys. God, you will perfect everything. I don't understand everything, but you will perfect everything concerning my life. All things work together for the good. All things work together for the good of those who love God and is called according to His purpose. If you love God, not getting, not getting, getting an offense with God, not ang being angry and immature at Him, if things doesn't work out the way you want, then you are in line with God. If you pursue His purpose for your life and you pursue the purpose that's important for God, God will always back you up and help you where you need help and, and, and give what you need to do. But then the Bible says if you follow those two conditions, then He will work out everything. All things will work together. doesn't matter how confused or disjointed they are for your good. And you stand on the Scripture. And what the disciples happened to them, was so, they were so traumatized. They were disillusioned, they were discouraged, they were devastated. Who has felt like that before? One person, okay, great. <laughs> but their trauma, of, because, because Jesus died, caused them to lose sight of the prophetic words that Jesus had given them about His resurrection. They forgot it. They were totally oblivious. They were so traumatized, they forgot about the prophetic words that Jesus gave them about the resurrection. Have you forgotten about covenants and promises that God has given you? And because of trauma, you've let it go and it's out of your memory. You're not even remembering it. You're not even thinking about it. And they were so traumatized that the Bible says when Jesus resurrected and He got out of the grave, he, two of His disciples were walking to Emmaus, a little town um, close to where Jesus was buried. And they were on their way and Jesus suddenly joined them and started talking to them. And they were chatting away, did not recognize that it was Jesus. So they've lost their ability to see spiritually and to discern because of the trauma. You are not understanding, Lord, why am I not getting revelation? Why am I not seeing what's going on? But trauma, because of trauma and vexation. And it's too, you've been going through it, a lot of stuff for seasons, disappointment, discouragement. And they only recognized him when Jesus appeared to them. And the second time they were all having communion together. And as they took the bread and drank the blood, suddenly that thing broke. And when he walked in, they recognized him. Oh my goodness, cannot believe it. And Jesus said to him, before I commission you, I have to deal with your hard-heartedness and your lack of faith. Because this is what trauma does. The stages and the effect of trauma on your soul is first, when it starts with discouragement. If you don't deal with the power of discouragement, it leads to disillusionment. What is, disillu what is disillusionment? You're totally out of it. You are so, I don't know, you're so disillusioned. And taken out by, by, the, by the direction things are going that you don't know, you know, you almost can't get yourself together. So discouragement 
undetected, undealt with, leads to disillusionment. If you don't deal with that, it leads to disinterest or apathy. We are totally at the point is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just so disconnected, cut off from this whole thing. And you, 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 some people are cynical after this season, scoffing at God, so disappointed, so discouraged, we're not understanding what's happening. Yeah. Buying the lies that God is not faithful. Part of that, we have to ask God to restore our spiritual seeing. We have to get revelation from God. And the only way we do it is via our conscience. Our conscience is a, is a window or a lens between your soul and your spirit. Between your soul and your spirit is your conscience, which is like a window or a lens. Okay? And this conscience must be kept clean to enable us to see spiritually and receive revelation from God. That's why the Bible says, don't sear your conscience through sin, because then you shipwreck your faith. Oh, well, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I just had to fall back on the crutches and, you know, sorry, the devil made me do it and all those type of things. And, you know, there's forgiveness for that. But the Lord is saying, as soon as you sear or defile or violate your conscience, it shipwrecks your faith. Because then you feel too guilty to come to God. Yeah. So that lens must be kept clean, your conscience. But what trauma does is, the trauma causes an, uh, the enemy to come and take advantage on most people so that they start questioning God's goodness because of what's happening to them. And if the devil can make you believe the lie that God is not good, that he has forgotten your address, he's withheld his promises, and the best that he has for your life, it's not going to happen anymore, then he's got you and you lose your power to see. Because trauma them, because people are, people are sly. They will maybe not direct tell God in His face, I'm angry with you. They will, you know, they will have certain behavior and say certain things. And, you know, you're actually angry at God. You're actually making comments and without God, God telling directly. And that causes that lens where you used to receive revelation and, and, and hear from God, almost like a veneer to come over that because of the trauma and because of the loss of your faith. Trauma works with faith. Ach, with fear. Remember, demonic spirits always work in a cluster because then they can be most effective. The Bible says a threefold cord cannot be broken. So demonic spirits really work one at a time. They work in a cluster together so they can be stronger. And when you have confusion in your life and when you have an unsound mind, it's, a, it's a evidence of a spirit of fear operating. If you have confusion and an unsound mind, trauma creates a failure mentality and a confused perspective. If you had lots of trauma, lots of disappointment, blah, blah. Failure mentality means that nothing's gonna work out. There's no anointing upon this thing. This is not gonna be repaired. There's no oil on it. And you have this mentality of failure and you can't get beyond that. You've got a confused perspective because over time you feel God is not able to do this thing and to deal with this thing. And it's not necessarily the truth. And the fruits of this are dullness, deadness, loss, hope, apathy, and blocked emotions. Now, we see the Israelites, when they were 40 years in the desert, they, how did they respond? They prolonged their time in the desert. They stayed in captivity in the season because they were, they had no faith. They were, they were hopeless. They were disappointed and discouraged. And the Bible says they because of the hardness of their heart and unbelief, they, stay, they, they almost stayed stuck in the season. They did not cross over. So our danger is that if we are the same as them and we are so discouraged, hopeless, and have such a lack of faith, we will prolong our own season in the wilderness. In the, and we can't, because of our unbelief and the hardness of our heart. Jesus told his disciples, because you did not believe that I'm going to be resurrected after I told you. He called it hardness of heart. They had to repent. Go and read the Bible before he commissioned them for the great commission and anointed them and sent them out. He had them repent of the hardness and the, and, the, and the lack of faith. And that can keep you stuck in this old season. We said that Jesus stayed in the wilderness for 40 days. He resisted the devil with the spiritual weapons. He quoted the word. He postured himself. And Jesus exited that 40 days full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's, it's possible. He was ready for his future, full of the power. We don't have to stay at this, in, in this confinement because of devastation, trauma, the lack of faith. We can cross over like Jesus did by resisting the devil like we're resisting. So the choice is ours. The choice is yours. I've heard this week people fighting one another, getting entangled with the demonic fires, the demonic eruptions. If you know that's distractions, you must 
get your focus off that ASAP and not be entrapped and ensnared in that and being beguiled and, 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 and provoked to get involved with that. You can say, no, 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 no. I've been in church. I'm setting my eyes, my face like a flint. I'm going for the door of 2022. Keeping my faith, keeping my posture. Because we must say, Lord, I want to reach prophetic fulfillment. I want to get into this new se season. I'm not staying behind. I'm not staying in this confinement. This is, what, this is the key tonight. So I want us to do a few prayers. Let's just stand. Okay, and I want you to pray like you mean it. Okay, are you ready? Pray like you mean it. I need to, you, you need to pray by faith. And you need to pray with me and just... Just release your own faith in this situation because the Lord is going to transact tonight with a few things. Okay, so are you ready? You can close your eyes, but say like you mean it and pray like you mean it. Let's start. Father, in the name of Jesus, I block and I stop every demonic volcanic eruption in my life. In the name of Jesus, I quench every demonic fire. That's been lit against me. In any area. I quench it with the waters of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I command. Every demonic. And adverse winds. Blowing against me. I command it to stop. I speak order. And I speak peace. Over my life. In the spirit. I now come. And I bind. And uproot every spirit of trauma that have lodged itself into the tissues of my brain, in my cell structure, and in my DNA. I bind you. I command you to be uprooted. I pull you out. I pull you out. I pull you out by the roots. In the name of Jesus, I dislodge you. I dislodge you. By the power of the name of Jesus. Lord, I erase and I remove the memory of trauma from my cell structure. With the blood of Jesus, I erase it. I break. I break. I break every lock-in of fear, failure complexities, emotional distress, and anxieties. And I break demonic locks and isolation placed on my emotions since birth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I choose with my will to forgive every person that have hurt me. I forgive my parents. I forgive people in authority, even friends and family that have hurt betrayed me in the name of Jesus that have offended me I forgive them I choose with my will to be obedient I release and I forgive them Lord I also ask you to forgive me for accusing your goodness Lord and speaking negative through my actions and through my words about your willingness to fulfill the promises over my life. I repent of it. I ask that you wash me clean with your blood. And right now, with the blood of Jesus, I ask that you clean and wash the lens of my conscience. That you wash it clean, Lord. Restore my spiritual sight. And my, and my ability to receive revelation. To receive revelation. I, break I break the demonic power, the demonic power over, my over my soul of discouragement, of discouragement disillusionment, disillusionment, and disinterest. And By the power of the blood of Jesus, I break it. I break it. I break it. I loose fear, anxiety, and dread. From every, from every layer of my soul. And tonight, and tonight I, speak to my I speak to my emotions and I command it, I command it to be disconnected, be disconnected from, past from past hurts. Let it go. 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 
Let it go. I take the sword of the Spirit and I cut any soul tie with the past season. I cut every umbilical cord, any feeding system of negativity and evil into my life. I break that umbilical cord and I declare and I decree my latter shall be greater than the former. Holy Spirit, tonight, I ask that you release a fresh anointing on me to cross over into 2022. I decree that a new wave of the power of the Holy Spirit will overtake me, will overtake me in the name of Jesus. I receive it and I thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Okay, let's be seated. Wasn't that good? I promise you when we pray like that, God shifts things. We're part of a voice activating kingdom and um, we, we transact when we pray that. And the Holy Spirit, it's powerful in this, in this corporate anointing how the Lord can do things. When believers get together, there's a special anointing. So I just want to end off, you know, this week with all its demonic eruptions and pressures and atmospheres. You know, uh, many times myself and Kari also go through a lot of stuff, you know, because as spiritual covering, how it works, there's an, you know, we act as an umbrella over your lives, those who are in covenant with us, and um, the attacks come for the umbrella first. That's part of the benefits of the club. So, um, you know, some, some days I'm like, okay. So, so listen, it's, it's, it's sometimes we feel it. That this week was hard. I, I felt... I felt a lot of stuff and a lot of uh, stuff like that. But in the midst of whatever was going on, God then suddenly started to break in with pockets of miracles. The, the one day something happens and I think, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I just thought, oh, well, that's good. You know, a little bit of a boost. But the next day, another thing happened. And the day after that, another thing happened. And I said, but the Lord is busy doing something. The Lord is doing a new thing. And I started recognizing God breaking in with miracles as a prototype and as a sign what He wants to do for you and me in this season. So you're busy in this trauma and thinking of foundation is falling out and you've, you're just warring this thing and suddenly God breaks in and there's a miracle. And the next day God breaks in and I think, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And as, this, as I realize God is doing a new thing because you can be so traumatized and vexed that you don't even recognize the small miracles. And you can think, oh, you know, whatever, is that all? No. I said, wow, God is busy doing something. I mean, one is fine, but next day, and the next day, and I said, God wants, and as, as, as those things happen, I felt faith arise on the inside of me. I almost felt like an activation on my inside. I felt it, an activation for miracles. And I felt the Lord was saying that Jesus could do very miracles in the atmosphere where there's no faith. And that's why God is saying, as the enemy is warring to bring trauma into us, to rob our faith, Faith is the only divine exchange rate between heaven and earth. Not your crying, not your complaining, not your whining, not your... Now nothing can shift God's arm. God feels compassionate, but faith is the only divine exchange rate between heaven and earth. God says, only thing that pleases me is faith. Yeah. And sometimes we think God is manipulated by us eating carpet and throwing tantrums and crying and weeping like an old dog on the carpet. He has compassion. You know, when you double clutch like... <laughs> but... The only thing that, that brings down heaven to earth is faith. And this is the war is for our faith. And that's when this thing started to happen. I thought, oh wow, I felt that faith, I felt that activation, something move and stir up in me and say, wow, God is busy releasing miracles. And I, and I felt that, you know, I felt that thing that the Lord is saying, I want you to end this year in faith, not in trauma, not in disillusionment. And if you, if, if you don't, uh, sometimes you have to make a decision with your will. doesn't matter how you feel. It's not an emotional thing. You have to decide, like Daniel decided, like people in the Bible decided, I am going to posture myself like this. doesn't matter how I feel. Emotions is unreliable. And I'm thinking, I'm not getting distracted by all these demonic fires because God wants me to push through and get, come through this gate. So God says a lot of people are disillusioned and God wanted to create hope that is linked to expectation for miracles. 
And it was a contradiction because, you know, you're feeling the heaviness, you're working through some stuff, but suddenly God breaks in with this, this pockets of miracles. And I felt the faith, I felt this thing um, rise up in me and I said, oh, wow. I just felt infusion of faith. And I felt the Lord is saying this hope that you're feeling, this expectation that I created, make sure that it transcends into faith. Because hope must, must move and move to faith. That's the next level. Your faith will create an atmosphere around you through your actions and words that will create a womb for the miracles to happen. So I felt the Lord wanted to release miracles to people, but they, not, they don't have the faith and the expectation and the spiritual platform to receive that. So I felt when the Lord did that to me, it was a contradiction where the Lord is inviting me, don't focus on that, but I want to do a new thing. I want to create a new thing. And I felt the faith rising in me because of the miracles I started to experience every day. It almost messed with your mind because it was this good and bad feelings. And um, I just realized what God wanted to do. And uh, the Lord wanted us to say, uh, he said to me, press in with faith because the Bible says, if you can only believe that all things are possible. I want to do that for you. It's all about faith. Can you only believe that all things are possible? Nothing is impossible to God. And the enemy has come to program us and to bring a mindset over us that God is not faithful. And there's a lot of hopelessness that have come in over our calling and our destiny and the words that the Lord has given us. But the Lord says there's a set time. And I want, to, I want that hope. And that expectation arise to transcend into faith so that I can transact with you and release the miracle into your hands. And when the miracles happen to me every day, consequentially, I decide but I'm going to focus on this because I feel this faith is rising in me. You know, what God wants to do, He wants to release His supernatural power through the execution of the Holy Spirit so that the finger of God can start operating in your life. Yeah. In the Bible in Egypt, you know, the magicians told Mo Moses, oh my goodness, wow, this thing that happened, it must be the finger of God. The power of God, because when God uh, moves with His finger and starts operating in your life, He rearranges and reorder things in the natural so that a divine convergence and a divine alignment can take place um, into your life with these plans. That people will say, oh wow, what happened to them? What happened to them? Surely it is the finger of God that is operating here. But God needs our faith to do that. So before we end, I just want us to make a few declar prophetic declarations before we take up the offering. Is that okay? There's power in decrees. Let's stand. The Lord says that His voice is powerful. His voice is a force, force. And as we decree things that His power of the Holy Spirit will speak through our voice to break down strongholds and shift things in the Spirit. So let's just do a few prophetic declarations and decrees. This is what you have to do at home. Try it at home. It's safe. Okay, let's pray. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that God has a purpose for my life. I receive wisdom and revelation over the hope of my calling. I declare and I decree that every strategy of hell that is interrupted, God's plan for my life will be exposed will be exposed i declare and i decree that every hindrance that has stopped me from advancing will be revealed and that i will advance in god's plan for my life i declare and i decree that new faith will be stirred in me in the name of jesus lord i ask you for a gift of faith I ask you for a greater measure in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that a new strength will come into my spirit. And I declare that the wilderness in my life will shift, it will blossom, and that God's glory will be revealed and will be seen in my life. And I declare and I decree that the best is yet ahead in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's, uh, let's be seated. Let's take up the offering. Listen, if you, if you, when you sow the seed, we say, Lord, let's activate every prayer, every petition, every decree that we have made. 
This is the power of prophetic decrees and declarations. You prophesy and you speak and you form the atmosphere around it that you want. Okay? Maturity means that you can, in spite of your emotions, in spite of your challenges, can rise up and decree what God is saying. Remember the key is, say what God is saying. Isn't that easy? This must be muy lagni. God says, pick yourself up, decree what God is saying. Declare and decree what God is saying. Prophesy that and you create an atmosphere around you. you your words will shift the atmosphere around you. you are, angels are going forward when you decree the word of God, what God is saying. And you do that in spite of what you see around you. Because that creates that atmosphere, that creates that pathway to be able to cross over. Don't get bogged down, don't get entangled in the demonic fires and demonic volcanic eruptions. Okay, when it happens this week, just say, they told me at church. They told me. Okay? Keep your peace. Keep your peace. That surpasses all understanding. Don't be pulled into these vortexes and the bubble gum and the toffee that the enemy wants to bring. Don't be provoked. Ne? Okay? Because it sucks out your faith. It makes you tired and brings trauma. Okay? The enemy plays dirty. So let's focus on... Getting our faith to a level where God wants to release miracles so we can move into this gate of 2022. In Jesus' name. I'm excited. And my bags are packed. I'm moving. It's happening. Any words? Come. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for your prophetic revelation in the name of Jesus. Sunny uh, Sisan. Yeah. Thank um, you. Uh, I saw. As the name that you up. Okay. Um, as a case of Zoom, I I saw the seed and how it was like deep, deep within the ground, and I felt like how that was like a like the prayers that you have prayed, that you felt like God hasn't answered yet, or that's just almost like has it come to a form that you prayed in your earlier days, or like that you just uh, like just have not been answered. And I felt how God said He has kept that and He's going to bring it up in the right time. I felt like God said this is the right time. Specific prayers that you felt like, but it still has not come to form. And God saying He's bringing those specific few that you felt like just you have not seen any progress on God saying He's bringing that to form and to the today in Jesus' mighty name. So I declare it with done in Jesus' name. Thank you. Long outstanding prophetic words the Lord has not forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Colin, I just want to, um, something that I saw during worship is I literally saw uh, the Lord pick up one of his roadwork cones and actually he's moving it. And what I heard him saying is, he's saying, I'm moving the goalpost for you. And where he's, uh, he's uh, extending it and actually where you need some vision and you're going to, and you do some measures and things and you look through a certain instrument i don't know the name but actually you you will be able to look twice as far it will be supernatural and your vision will be spot on perfect Amen. and i have a word for you uh, what's your name yes marcel marcel it's sometimes when people go hiking and that you need to actually jump from rock to rock and i actually saw you where you actually need to take the step to actually jump from the one rock to the other one but you actually I actually, you, you, you want someone on that side just to extend the hand to actually to help you to get that, that side. And I heard the Lord said, I could see him extending his hand to you, saying, take my hand. Trust me. You can jump. Mari, I've got a word for you. Yeah. I just hear the Lord say, there's a finisher anointing on you. And I put today the final victory on you. And I hear how you cried out to the Lord and you said to the Lord, Lord, how long? And the Lord said, I must remind you, years ago, I was crying out to the Lord for something very long. And then some, a prophet gave me what and said, stop asking me when. But the Lord is saying, your time has now come. This is your hour. This is your season. And then I see a clock and I see how the Lord is bringing you out behind the clock and even a timepiece as well. And I feel that the Lord is saying the time is up, your time is now. No longer will you have to say, Lord, 
how long how long will I have to wait before I act so that you can underwrite my efforts but the Lord is saying now is the time I've heard your cries and now is the time that I'm answering you and then I see the Lord gave you a key of David and he said I am not a respecter of person when Anton was preaching about the faith I hear the Lord saying I'm a respecter of faith and the Lord said the same way then David had faith in me the Lord said the same way you should have and when you applied that faith the same way David applied his faith you will see the same result I hear the Lord say so don't don't doubt don't put unbelief but put put your faith together in the Lord in this season and the Lord is saying there's no question about my willingness or my faithfulness if I will bless you and if I will push you into your destiny there's no question about that but the Lord said there is a question I must ask you and he said Mari will you radically believe all the prophecies that I gave you and I hear the one specifically about the prof properties that the Lord gave you Lord say will you radically believe that and will you commit to all the promises that is in his word and the prophecies that he gave you that is a question to you Wow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ach, ach, ein Engels Armand. I felt how God said there's certain stuff that's almost scratching you in inside your heart. You know, like a, like because he's scratching, scratching, it's like almost like it's annoying, but you know, it's still there no matter how much you try to get. Almost that feeling like this thing just does not want to leave my heart. It's still bugging me. And if there's certain stuff in your heart, but you don't you don't share it to anybody, but you just almost bottle it, just keep it in, inside your heart. And I felt how God said he wants to bring into you a season where he wants to heal those things that feels like a scratching on your inside. You you wanna you won't allow it to come out, but the scratching God says he's even healing the, the constant wounds that it has caused and also he's gonna co gonna bring you to a place where you can also come to a place where you can talk to God with that and that you will almost not internalize it but externalize it with birth with God and that you and God I felt just specifically God saying he's going to bring peace to those things and he's going to bring solutions for you and you're going to feel like God thank you <laughs> thank you okay. Amen. in Jesus name Amen. Um, I'll be Michael. Adrian Fricky um, Fricky for, um, I actually wanted to speak in English, but I feel that I have to give you this in Afrikaans. So sorry for everyone else that's zooming in that's English speaking. I'll ask for supernatural interpretation. Frikie, I feel that your love was very, very under attack geweest in the last week. And I feel that the fans have come to you to shake. Om jou te shake en goed te mekaar te maak in jou leven. En ek voel dat hierdie ding wat op die plaas aan die gang is, op die oomlik is bezig om een wrijving te bring tussen jou en jou vrou. En die Heere sê, keep your peace. Keep your peace. En ek het gesien terwijl ek worship, hoe jy en jou vrou staan saam en jylle worship saam en jylle bid saam. En ek voel dat die vijand op hierdie stadie maak, dat omdat daar soveel hevak om jou aangaan, my aangaan wat jou geloof bezig is om te toets, maak dit dat jy kan of nie eindelijk tyd krijg vir dit en die Heere sê, onthou ek het vir jou belofte gegees, staan op my woord, staan op my promises, ek het vir jou gesê, this is what I'm gonna do, en die Heere sê, ek gaan die familie jouk breek oor jylle leven, dat is die jouk wat jylle dra, en jy weet, en ek weet wat het was en is, en die Heere sê, ek gaan het breek, en die Heere sê, ek gaan jou reposition in die gemeenskap, die vijand probeer om jou uit die gemeenskap uit te kry, die vijand probeer om vorige goed op jou skouwers te sêt, maar die Heere sê, hy breek dit, en die Heere sê, jy en jou vrou sê, so die belangrikste ding is dat jylle nabe aan die Heere moet bly, dat jylle saam met die Heere loof en prijs, dat jylle saam moet bid en die Heere sê, jy gaan sien hoe 2022 jou en jou vrou sy beste jaar gaan wees. In Jesus naam. Amen. And then, and then I want to give um, Lauren your friend, Amy. Amy. Amy, when I sat there, I heard these songs. And I'm not even going to try to sing it because you're all going to laugh at me. But there's a song, I Will Love Again. Have you heard this song? Um, I'm going to tell you now by whom this song is. There we go. There we go. Yes. And I felt that the Lord that said, thank you. See, there's other people that got the gift. 
if I would have tried to sing it, it would have come out in a way that you thought, oh, Jesus, where are we? Okay, and I felt that the Holy Spirit was saying that the enemy came with a long string of relationships and they didn't work out. And the enemy started putting a doubt in your heart that there's something wrong with you. And you started to buy that lie. And God says, there's nothing wrong with you. I have actually protected you because there is someone. Because when you were about 16 years old, you actually made a list to the Lord. And I felt that you said to the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to go away this side or that side from anything. But I want what you have for my life. And then life happened. And you started walking a couple of circles in life and you made some wrong choices and things happened. And, but the Lord says, the promises that you made when you were 16 years old are still standing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, because I can see them standing. And God says, I will not forget that day. And the Lord says, I have rescued you before and I will rescue you again. And God says, I already have someone for you. And God says, you watch and wait as you come back into alignment, into my purposes and into my plans. God says, I will suddenly open up a door for you. God says, I brought you here and I will cause you to come to a place where you will experience my love and I will heal your heart. Because the enemy came to mess with you. He messed with your heart. He messed with your mind mess with your life and God is saying what you are carrying is also a family burden and God is saying I'm breaking that off you there's been a covenant breaking spirit that was assigned to you since you were a little girl that's why things haven't worked out in your life business stuff hadn't worked out job stuff didn't work out relationships didn't work out but God is saying you watch how I'm going to restore you I'm going to restore you as a woman of God and God says I've given you a gift of faith that even in the midst of turmoil you always had your Bible open even in the midst of the issues when people say but leave God and there was other relationships and religions that was introduced to you in your previous relationship and you said I can't let go of God am I right and you didn't choose you didn't steer away from God and God says I've seen that and because you were willing to lay down a relationship for my sake God says you watch how I will put you right in front and God says I'm going to open up the fashion world for you I'm going to open it up for you and God says I've given you a tremendous uh, gift to design and just see God is saying I'm going to put you right in front God says this is your season to start flying again and I will make you whole and you will give me the glory and God says I'm even going to sort out the fashion family fight there's a family fight going on it's been a long outstanding fight and God is destroying the line that fight will not continue and you were always scared and say Jesus I don't want this to come to my family and it's always fighting fighting God says I'm releasing my peace into the family fight God says it's your season to experience uh, um, I almost want to say like a, a season where there will be no fights and the Lord says because of all the fighting you always spoke out and then at a stage you started becoming quiet. The Lord says, I'm going to pull out the thorn from within the family and I'm releasing my shalom into the family. In Jesus' name. Did it make sense to you? In Jesus' name. So Father, Anton, I'm done. Father, I want to pray for every person here. Lord, as we are about to go into a season, Lord, where we are going to get our families together, whatever the enemy has set up to cause family fights, family issues, drama, Father, with families, we want to cancel that in the spirit, in Jesus' name. We decree and we declare we will have a family time, Father. We will be able to release hope. We will be able to release peace. And Lord, we will carry the atmosphere in heaven, even to our family members that are not born again. I pray that the atmosphere that we carry will start shifting, Father, things over our families. And Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace that you will release through us your children, your peace into every household who do not know you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. All right, family, that's all that we've got time for today or tonight, actually, until next week. Bless you, and we see you next week, Sunday, in the morning. All right.